Hi there, my friend and friends. If you've ever seen any of my reaction videos in the past or just dug into amazing code pens on your own time, you've probably seen some of Ben Evans' amazing work. While he has a normal front-end developer job during the day, he pushes the limits of what CSS can do in his spare time. And I've long been amazed by his mind-blowing creations, and luckily he was kind enough to talk to me about how he's inspired to create them in the first place, how long they take him to make, what he's learned from making them, and tips for people who want to get started with this type of thing, as well as much more. And here we're going to be opening things up with him answering a question of mine where I asked him what he has to say in response to people who question the point of making crazy things like this with CSS when there are easier, more performant, and more practical ways to create these things than using CSS to do it. Well, I, uh, I agree with those people. It is pointless. <laughs> but I sort, of, I sort of fell into it through laziness. I was, I was, I wanted to write a sort of story and then make a website about it and have illustrations on it that sort of went from page to page. And I was feeling very lazy. I couldn't be bothered to find any software to draw with and couldn't be bothered to put my laptop down to find a pen and paper. So I thought, I'm used to doing front end. I'll just uh, draw with the CSS. And it, and it worked really well because I could, I could move the images from one to the other and they sort of morph into each other. Obviously, it's not great for the GPU. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I got into it. And then towards the end of the story I was writing, well, I did two chapters and gave up. But there was a, I, drew, I drew a glass and I thought, oh, this is really fun to draw in CSS. So, that's, so then I did a proper photorealistic glass because it was so much fun. Yeah, that's sort of how I got into doing them on CodePen. When did you create that? It was a long time ago, I think. About five years ago now. Yeah, it's 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 still looking at it now. It's still mind blowing for me that it's done with CSS. It's crazy. The code is horrible now. I look back at it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can relate to that even when I, I look at some of my old videos and I'm just like, oh, I wouldn't do that like that today. But you know, it's the but, joy of but, being a developer. Yeah. But drawing with CSS seems to lend its well really well to the glass. Drawing man made objects is quite simple, which is why I keep not doing that because it's harder. The, draw the lemons are much harder than the glass. And then I moved on after that to a portrait just to challenge myself. And then a landscape, and landscapes are pretty tricky because of all the minute details of leaves and things. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, everything here looks tricky. Even with the glass, I'm looking at it and I, I wouldn't even know how to start with, with any of these. And just looking at all the different ones that you have created, obviously it was interesting at first, it was for illustrations for your, a story you were doing, but and then that sort of led to the, the glass one you mentioned, but just even the idea of it before you start, where does that come from? <laughs> well, that one was sort of a natural progression. So I, I did the glass and then I thought, well, that's a still life. So I should do a portrait and then I should do a landscape just to go through all the sort of three types of main types of art there are. And then I got a bit bored of just copying photos that I'd taken. So I thought, I could probably try and do something that doesn't actually exist outside of CSS. So that, that image doesn't, that's the only place it exists in mm -hmm. the photo. Because obviously you can't take a photo of the future. That one was too big for the browser. <laughs> <laughs> Surrender. It, and it took a year to do. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, but part of the, part of the year was I had no idea how to draw it. So I had to learn Blender to draw the actual machine. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, Blend, Blender's really good. I've really got into Blender. So pyramid, the pyramids in the background are from Google Earth. I just zoomed in and drew those. And then the, the sort of plastic rubbish is uh, just a picture of a load of plastic. And then, yeah, the machines from I drew on Blender and copied it on into CSS. Drawing the rubbish went on for ages. I was like, every single bit of rubbish would seem to be one one per evening. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, 12,000 lines of, of, of code in there. 
It's nuts. And I noticed this one is HTML anyway. Um, and I think the other ones I looked at are too. Usually when I'm looking at these, a lot of people use Pug. Is, do you write it in HTML? Yeah, just HTML. I have done Pug for a carousel I was trying to do, but because I wanted it to be super small. But yeah, I, I just plain HTML. And I don't, and because it's art and not practical in any sense, I don't stick to divs or anything. I just make up my own elements mm -hmm. because it's, it's good to have those as a starting point because they don't have anything attached to them. There's no display block already or no hat margin underneath or anything. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, just, and then it's also a little bit easier for you when it's just, you know, your lights and your highlights and your whatever you, you want to call it, you can find it easily and you're not worried about class names or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, every, every single element is usually an nth of type. So I just do nth of type for each thing and it just, just like little, write little comments on which is what. But yeah, going back to your first question, I didn't, I didn't quite finish answering that. The, so it is pointless, but the sheer amount of stuff I've learned from doing it is ridiculous. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a much better front end developer now than when I started. Yeah, I think Lynn Fisher said it in one of her videos that you can't master something without knowing its limit. And so I'm really pushing the browsers to the limits, the CSS to the limits all the time, too much most of the time. I thought as I did the art gallery, I could just do another room and do another room. And then I then I kind of thought of a, a dungeon crawler type game mm -hmm. and, and started drawing the walls for it, like the stonework. And so I drew the stonework and I thought I'll do the map, I'll do the layout of the, the maze and just did it in plain red as everyone uses for the default thing as in CSS, did it in red and white, drew the map, and then thought, actually, this just looks better in red and white. I will get the during trying to get the browser to draw the walls. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but I sort of messed around with the, it, it's got this, it's got this sort of depth. There's a really subtle shade of layers mm -hmm. and layers. So you walk through them, but you don't really notice. So everything gets a bit lighter as you walk through. I was quite oh, happy that's how you do it. And you can see there are angles, so it's sort of, helps with the look of the shadows. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of like the texture and everything without yeah. having to be too complicated with what you're doing, which is great. But creating something like this, obviously you had an idea of like, okay, well, you built this one, as you said, on top of the, the art gallery one that you had, which sort of showed all of your other work, uh, which was really cool. But like, say you get that idea of like, you know, even for the art gallery, you come up with this idea of, I want to make an art gallery that people can walk through and it show, you know, goes to the different pieces I've created from like that stage to the next one of, okay, I'm going to sit down and actually make this. That's a big jump. I know for me, I would just be looking, you know, sort of like a beginner when they're staring at a blank VS code document and have no idea what to do. Yeah. Every idea seems to just progress into the next. The original art gallery was. I obviously, as every front end developer does, they drew a rotating cube in 3D. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'd done that and I thought, I just thought, what about if I was inside the cube, then it would sort of be like a, a room. And then I could probably put a grid over the top. I'd done a spider web before this, where a spider chases your cursor around, depending on what section of the web you hover over. So I thought I could probably do a similar grid over the top of the room, so your so it just rotates the cube depending on where your mouse is on the grid. So right. So I just keep combining all my ideas together. Every every time I do one, I just sort of naturally leads to another one. Mm -hmm. um, and then browsers, or yeah, browsers keep bringing out new CSS all the time. Especially at the moment, it's gone crazy the amount of new stuff. And so I just think, oh, I could, I'd like to try that new thing or something like that. And it's just, it's just a nice idea of how to combine what I've done previously with this new fe this new feature they've just released. So the, the ideas don't ever seem to stop. <laughs> I'm always amazed by it, but I guess like something like the has selector or, or some of the other things that like you said have recently come out have probably made your life a lot easier. Or even, I don't know if you've been able to use them now because they're yeah. more new, but some of the new color features we have too could probably come in handy. Yeah, I haven't really got into the colors that much. I've used like the new has and things like that, which made things a lot easier. But you'd mentioned that that one that was in like the junkyard, um, the futuristic one took you a year to create. Uh, I'm assuming they don't all take you that long, but I just, they, you know. They all take 
quite a long time. The mocha pot I just recently did would seem to be the quickest one I've ever done. <laughs> Normally they take months. Yeah, the longest was the sci-fi picture. Mm-hmm. The second longest was probably the, the game where you have to build a lighthouse. Yep. Because I had no idea how to do that. I was just messing around drawing houses in every... Just, I just had a 4x4 four four grid, I think it is, or 5x5. Five five. And then I was drawing every single possible combination of house you could possibly draw. And then thought, and then got three months later, I thought, actually, there's too many combinations for me to do. <laughs> so I scrapped the whole thing and started again and built oh, this no. sort of formula to work out how it would grow from the floor using checkboxes and how it would know if it was from a built in the sky using sort of bits that I'd collected from the three months of drawing the houses one by one. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, that sounds, I know for me really for, it sounds a little frustrating, I guess, when you realize that you, maybe you went down the wrong path and something like that. Is there ever been a time when you just hit a wall and you haven't been able to finish it or haven't been able to get whatever you wanted to do finished or? There's a few that I haven't finished on this. There's, there's someone who wanted to draw this 3D game where you sort of fly above the landscape, but that was a bit too much. I thought, I wonder if I can drag, sort of invent a way of doing drag using CSS. So I, I, I like a nice pun, so I started drawing this dragster that, <laughs> that you might be able to drag around in 3D. But as I was drawing this dragster, it's like a retro, low polygon thing. Uh, it sort of reminded me of the Mario 64 starting screen. So I thought, I'll draw that instead and just gave up on the drag idea altogether. <laughs> Yeah, that Mario one was really cool. <laughs> it was, uh, I like that one. I'm stuck up with one at the moment. I'm trying to draw the Earth in 3D um, without using any JPEGs or anything. I'm trying to get the browser to co- to get to the sort of level of detail I want. I want it to be quite realistic, but the browser really struggles with drawing a sphere. I guess, I guess it's also the fidelity of the sphere because every piece of it has to be an, indi- well, I guess a little bit like the Mario almost, but at a higher fidelity. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I was just keep picking random planets in the solar system and coming to think, oh, I'll come back to the earth in a minute. I've just done <laughs> yeah. this pun, which was quite nice and quite easy to do. And I seem to be sort of progressing my way into knowing how to do the earth, but I'm not there yet. I'm just wondering, you said <laughs> from the beginning that they are kind of pointless. Um, but they open up this door of learning. So I'm guessing that you, you've you come across at least a few interesting things along the way that maybe could be useful um, outside of 3D creations, or even if it's just like these really fun tips or tricks that like, oh, this makes this a million times easier. But yeah, it sort of trickles down into my normal day job. But I mean, there's a, there isn't a lot. I don't, because you just learn every single thing you can do with an element. I think that's the main thing that makes you learn you see something you go oh i can do that with that or and it just becomes like second nature because you've tried to manipulate every single element in or every, every single bit of html in every single way possible my starting point is always to put the colors nowadays to put the colors in variables and keep your palette quite limited because then you can change them further down the line like when i was drawing my daughter the portrait mm-hmm. i started on the left eye and it was looking quite creepy, like one of those horror film dolls. So I stuck a filter on it and changed the colors to sort of warm them up a bit. So then I put the filter on the photo I was copying and copied the rest of the image using that filter. So that eye, one eye has a filter on it and the rest of the image doesn't, but it's, they match, <laughs> which is really weird. So, <laughs> so you can always just put filters on things if things look really bad. Aspect ratio I really got into recently because that's super quick. You can don't have to mess around with the height and the width. I think for me, it's a little bit like you said, though, is like the more creative you get in, and run into like, you know, when you're doing things that are outside of the box, you learn a lot about it's just problem solving, which at the end of the day is what our jobs are. So I think yeah. that's like the, the main skill and just like a deeper understanding of how everything works. So when you do run into something, you sort of right away have an idea of how to fix it or how to approach it. Or if you don't know how, you can probably, you know, if you've been flexing the creative muscles for a while, you can sort of come up with a solution a lot easier because you know just how everything works in, in sort of different ways. <laughs> yeah, you get so familiar with it just from trying to do everything you can with it that it just becomes second nature. It makes your mm-hmm. day job seem 
really easy. <laughs> I think it's just incredible that the stuff that you, you build and obviously, you know, whenever I'm looking through your code pen, I was just always, my mind's always blown, but I'm curious from with all of the creations that you have done so far, if any of you have like a specific one that's your favorite. My favorite is always the one I'm currently working on. Right. Because it's always better than the last one. It's like, um, I was really pleased with the, the mocker pot I just recently did. Mm -hmm. Because it was so quick to do. I just had the idea of like, I think I saw some art on Instagram of, of just a mock pot. I think it was green and red or something. I just thought, oh, that'd be really fun to do in CSS. You can make it 3D quite easily because there's only six or eight sides to it. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing it, I realized that I could light one side of it and then gradually fade the light out as it span at the same time. So it, it looks properly three dimensional, which is something I've always wanted to do and never managed. I've never managed to get light into working in a CSS before. Yeah, that's funny because as you as you were just as you were saying that, I was looking at like the middle part of it, and I was like, "Wait, how did he do that with the lighting on there?" <laughs> it's just because <laughs> usually you get that and, you know the light turns with it because you just color each one individually. Yeah. Uh, that's really is it again a filter like something on top or yeah, is so it? it yeah. So colors background doesn't work because it just jumps from one to the color to the next. But if you use a filter, you can filter the colors smoothly. That's cool. I wouldn't even have thought about. Yeah, that's neat. I, that's not even how I was thinking it would have worked. That's awesome. So not only am I doing from, I, I think I'm just adjusting the lightness of each side, and I'm also rotating you so they start off yellow and then turn bluer as they get to the other side right. to sort of give it that proper shadow feeling. Because originally I was going to make crazy like red on one side and green on the other, so. It, like the original art I saw, but then I, it started to look so real that I just wanted to make it see how real I could get looking. And then mm -hmm. I had to fake some shadows, like the one on the hand, it's not how it would look in reality, but there's a sort of fake shadow on that. And there's one on the, there's a tiny shadow on the spout. It probably right. should, should be a lot longer than that, but I had no way of wrapping it around the edges. So I have to sort of fake thing but it's interesting even there because it has enough of the realism with the rest of the light changing that you don't really notice that, that shadow should be moving or shifting or anything uh, along with it that's yeah, really cool and then the actual big shadow on the base wobbles with the changing sides of the octagon which is quite <laughs> hard to get right the one the, the rotating card that i did was also the hardest part of that was doing the shadow the shadows always seem to be the hardest part because they're not attached to the image like they should be. The the card was quite funny, actually. Diana Smith, I'm sure you know of, is sort of the original CSS inventor, or the first person I know who knew who did it. So I thought I sort of wanted to do a, a homage to her, and, and she always does traditional painting, well, quite often does traditional painting. Yes, yep. And I thought, what well, if I did a, if I took the sort of picture card, that's almost the same traditional style so that's a, a really basic simple way of doing it so it's quite a, a sort of fun homage to her work <laughs> and then i made it 3d and got obsessed with trying to get the shadow to look right <laughs> that's cool yeah i remember when doing a couple of things and just like you said the shadow you're working so hard to try and make it realistic and for me it just it racks my brain yeah i, I took a, a, a film of me rotating a card to see what the shadow looks like but yeah, I, I really like it because I think it's like what um, special effects CGI used to be like in films, probably, where they had to try and hack things together because they didn't have the ability to do it yeah. like nowadays. So it's a bit like that because you can't actually do these things with CSS. There's no actual ray tracing. So to try and make it look that way, it's really good fun. Um, do you have any tips sort of if anybody were to want to you know, get their feet wet and just sort of dabble a little bit without being overwhelmed maybe yeah well i think i think as long as you understand like the, the one that took me a year i was working on it about half an hour every other day so it didn't really take a year it's just a long process i just find it really relaxing it's something i just do in the evening when i've got a spare moment to do it i can't really get frustrated by it because i think well if i get stuck doing something i'll just turn turn that off and come back to it tomorrow but as long as you know that this is going to take a long time, no pressure to finish it. It's just fun and just move, just get a div, well, not the div, you know what I mean, an element, 
move it into the position you want it, see if you can just do that. That's one evening's work. Then the next evening you do the next one. It's just a sort of really slow process. And as long as you expect that, I think you'll be all right. A huge thank you to Ben for joining me for this interview and also a little bit of an apology that it took me so long to edit this since we did it. But if you made it all the way to the end here, I'm assuming you're amazed by everything that Ben does as well. So do make sure to check him out on CodePen and I've also linked his Twitter down below so you might as well give him a follow while you're at it. And with that, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.